And it's a big one tonight, live from Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, undefeated New Orleans leading the Southern Division of the Eastern Conference against the challenging Birmingham Stadiums, who won their last four in a row. From the 26, Walton throwing first down, looking for Buford Jordan, who stacked up in the backfield out there. A blow to whistle in a moment. That was Fred Bohannon, the first man to get to him. The strong side safety had a loss on the play, back to the 23. Defensively, it is Mike Perko, 69, Jackie Klein, 98, Joe Cugliari, 95, Dave Burfoy, I met an MVP last week, number 75, the front four for the stadium. Herbie Spencer, 55, Mike Murphy, 56, the linebackers. The X-back, the fifth back, is David Evans, 26. On the corners, Dennis Woodbury leading the league in interceptions, number 21. Ricky Ray, 27. The safety is Fred Bohanna, who just made the tackle, and Chuck Clanton, 24. That is Celine in motion. Buford Jordan trying to get some running room. Does not even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Snowed under there. Led by Cugliari, number 95, and number 69, Mike Perko. And it'll be sec third down at about 12. Mike Perko, uh, is he a story? He was cut by the New Orleans Breakers, and Perko wants to prove something. Third and long in that defense of Birmingham, very much in evidence. Now Buford Jordan becomes a slot back left. Mark Shaleen, the only setback on third and long. Nine men on the line of scrimmage. Walton gets it away and is intercepted. And there goes Clinton. Touchdown, Birmingham. Johnny Walton has been intercepted three times all year. That is number four, touchdown. Jim, the man that puts the heat on is Herb Spencer, number 55, the outside linebacker. He saw the fullback set up the block, so he puts the, puts the blitz on. He's going to come from the right-hand side of your screen. That's Murphy coming up the middle also. But you see Spencer there, makes Walton throw the ball away. Clanton is there. He was throwing the ball to the tight end, Bale, number 87. And Chuck Clanton picked the ball up. Just nobody in the end zone. He almost lost the ball about the two-yard line. Danny Miller, who is perfect thus far, with Birmingham, nine out of nine. 10 out of 10, and without the offense of Birmingham touching the ball yet, all of a sudden, they've got the lead, 7 up. A crowd that at the moment is being rained on at Legion Field, but a crowd that has already seen a bizarre game, and it is only 5 minutes old. 7 nothing. the Stallions. The ball at the 32-yard line, and there's a problem with the clock, and so we'll have to wait a little bit longer for them to get it straightened out. Well, one of the reasons I'm not coaching and I'm up here, as I said, I would force Dario Casarino to kick again. And that's <laughs> been their best offensive play, Casarino's punt in the fumble of Frederick. Donnie Walton waiting. He has just been intercepted. He's not completed a pass yet. Chuck Clanton returned it. Here comes Tom White back to tell Walton what the problem is. We know what it is, and now he will tell the crowd what it is. Or will he? Nope. He's going to say, let's go. Wind that clock which now shows 10.99 on the clock, so we'll have to play this by ear. Instead of 10 minutes, it shows 10.91. Now the rain really begins to pelt down, and the officials note the clock and say, let's run that thing down to where it should be. Kept on the field. The time will be kept on the field. Okay. We'll have to just keep in touch with the officials through our man on the field to give you the time of the ball game. Look at that rain. How many times have we been at Legion Field in Birmingham with big games coming up, the stadiums playing well, and the weatherman not cooperating? It only rains in Birmingham on Monday night, huh. between 7 and 10. From a 32-yard line, New Orleans treading by 7, first down. And that is Buford Jordan back there now, and he's got the football. Jordan just picks up a yard, and that is all. Fine play made by Jackie Klein, who moments ago stuffed Marcus Dupree after a one-yard pickup. Well, we thought that the New Orleans Breakers were going to throw on first down primarily. Well, they've been trying to run the ball, and as far as running the football, they have done nothing but, again, Jim, the rain. 
Well, I thought they might have thrown their ball, and I'm not Johnny Walton and don't know the conditions, which look bad, but he certainly has a field position to throw if he's ever going to throw in this game tonight. Inside the 35-yard line of Birmingham. Oh, he's got Lockett out there one-on-one -on, -one on the outside on Ricky Ray. That's maybe where he wants to go. He's looking that way, but dumping it out to Shaleen, who was not even looking at him. Mike Perko was over with Shaleen, and as you can see, Herbie Spencer was with Johnny Walton in the backfield. You know why Mark Shaleen did not look at the ball? Because he saw Perko coming. He figured, if I'm going to look at it, I may get <laughs> nailed here, so if I ignore the ball, then Perko won't hit me. The Breakers, remember, had 591 yards of total offense last week. Johnny Walton had 440 yards throwing the ball. A short-lived record because Abair broke that. But here tonight, they picked up maybe four or five yards all night. Marion Brown checks back in. Minus three yards, Johnny Walton is. Three wide receivers. Shotgun. Look out, Spencer really leveled Walton. And the throw downfield intended down there for number 85, Charlie Smith, is incomplete. But Johnny Walton really got another calling card from Herbie Spencer for the second time in two plays. It's fourth down. Jim, I said the linebackers are, are wreaking havoc with the deep with the offensive line. There's Murphy 56 coming, but watch on the right of your screen. Here comes Spencer. Herb Spencer just levels Walton ahead. He had time. He had Charlie Smith in the end zone. May have been open. Number 26 is covering on the outside. That's David Evans. But take a look at. Never had a chance to get it to him. Mazzetti hasn't missed the field goal all year long. This one from 47 yards out. He has missed his first. He has missed his first. 8.52 to go. Jim Smith, next Steeler in two Super Bowl titles. And rings on his fingers. 86 the other. Dale Mason, 81 the tight end. Robert Woods, Mike Turner the tackles. Buddy Adelaide, all pro in the USFL. And Pat Saint in the guards. And Tom Banks the center. The defense of New Orleans in a moment. It is second down and five from the 35. Clock is kept on the field, they say, but the clock is running here, and it's just eight minutes to go in the first quarter. There goes Jones in motion again. Oh! Leon Barry, the ball was loose, but the man went down. Talk about some defense. That was Darrell Wilkerson who made that number 75. He's one of the front three. The other two are Jeff Gaylord, 61 at the nose. Mike Robinson, 92 at the end. The linebackers in the fourth, Ray Phillips, Lars Williams filling in for the injured Bill Goff, who's out for the year he was a leading tackler, Marcus Merrick, an all-pro, number 56, Ben Needham, number 59, at the corners, Woodrow Wilson, 20, Lindell Jones, 23, the safeties, Charles Harbison, 42, Joe Restick, 36. Toller comes in as a wide receiver, number 85. They will alternate wide receivers bringing in plays. Stout over the middle as his man and that is Perry first down across the 40 yard line I don't you like it Joe Cribbs told me before the game that he would like to get in the office Perry is hurt that's Marcus Merrick said he got the ball but Joe said he'd like to get in the office for catching the ball or throwing the ball to Leon Perry Leon Perry is supposed to have been a blocker last week against Tampa Bay carried the ball 13 times now they're throwing to him all right, Stout's going back, and he's looking to the outside of Toller. He can't find anyone open it, so he sees Leon Perry, the big guy down the middle. Look at the two hits. He gets hit sandwiched between Lawrence Williams and Marcus Merrick. Seven minutes to go in the quarter on the interception. Birmingham lead. Birmingham was 2-3 and three. this year, 4-1. and one. Last year, they're averaging only 13 points a game. This year, nearly 30 points a game. Last year, they had 13 turnovers at this point, only six this year. That's quite a turnaround for the Birmingham offense. Their defense... Well, the record is the same, but take a look at the defense there. They gave up 136 yards plus rushing last year, only 68 on the average this year per game. First down and whistle blow. Should have been Robert Woods, the left tackle moving. Ball start, number 72 on the offense. That's who it was. First down. First and 15, they'll move it back five. You know, when you were looking at those statistics, Jim, the incredible thing was at, at the end on the defense, the takeaways and the giveaways, that's where they improve a lot. And the, the other thing is the sacks that they had during the course as far as the defense is concerned. I mean, they're just doing a great job defensively. They're number one against the rush. Leon Perry really racked up his back in the ball game after being out for just one play. <laughs> First down, 
down from the 37. Fake to Perry. Stout still with the ball. Swings it out here. Oh, hold on to it. Joe Cripps does and picks up a couple of yards. Actually, more than a couple because it was first and 15, and he got by the original line of scrimmage, and now it is about second and nine. So give him six yards on the play. You talk about Joe Cripps as a runner. Watch his catch, pass catching ability now. The concentration. He does lose the ball. He's setting up the screen. He gets a fake block up in the middle at, at Jeff Gaylord. But watch this. He bobbles the ball. He's still looking at the ball. Forget who's going to tackle him. Now he avoids a, a defender and picks up five yards. Second down, nine. Good stop. Looking across the middle, and there's Darrell Mason, the tight end. First down inside the 45-yard line. Tackle made there by Charles Harbison. The strong safety who was thrilled that he made the tackle, but one thing, Charles, it's first down Birmingham. Darrell Mason takes this ball away from number 56, Marcus Merrick. You see him in your screen. Now watch out. He is, Mason is not his primary target. Then he sees him in the middle. Watch the wrestling match right here and see who comes away with it. The big man. There's, oh, excuse me. I said Marcus Merrick was there. That's Lawrence Williams. Marcus Merrick also there. And then Harbison makes the tackle. But that was a great catch in the rain. 7-0 Birmingham. They're driving. They've got the ball at the 42-yard line. Kohler in motion. Battling for first. A yard or two is Leon Perry and does not get too much. I'll repeat again what happened last week against Tampa Bay because that's what Riley Dodge would love to happen to Zeke Curry doesn't want to happen this week. There were two drives last week that Birmingham had, one of almost nine minutes, and then starting the final quarter, they reeled off better than 11 minutes for a touchdown drive, and the entire drive, 11 minutes, only went 60 yards. That's the amazing thing. They took the ball at the 40-yard line and kept it for 11 minutes and 10 seconds. Second out of nine. The crib, stout, pump once, looks long for Jim Smith. In, whoop, no flag, Smith goes down, double coverage, he's upset, Raleigh Dodge is upset, but it's third down and nine. Jim, you're going to hear the boos here from the hometown crowd. Someplace else, maybe not so. But on this one, when you take a look at it, Jim Smith is there. Watch what the defenders are doing. They're all going for the ball. All right, they're going up in the air. That's Miller 40 there. He is not hitting him in the back. Smith is just going down, and they're going for the football. That's an excellent call by the official. Earl Gant makes his first appearance in the backfield tonight, number 23, on third and long. The audience has done nothing on offense except throw the ball to Chuck Clanton for the only score of the game. And let's face it, Birmingham has not moved in close enough even yet for a field goal. So it's been that one big play thus far, plus great defense. And here's Stout on third and long. Again, going over the middle for Gant. And Gant, with Miller there covering, cannot get to it. And it's fourth down. And out comes Skip Johnston out of Auburn. Johnston, as he comes out, is a continuing story. We've had Birmingham, and, well, this is the third time in the last four weeks, we've said that his job has really been in jeopardy. And Skip has known it. And every time we say that, he has come out and had an outstanding game and he is still there and still punting well. The one thing about him, though, he's really not had to kick under pressure. What I'm saying, he's kicking from the 41-yard line going in. There's not a lot of heat on him. Miller is one man deep. Johnson for the end zone, and it will bounce in the end zone and go out. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Chuck Clanton's interception and return for 30 yards is the only score of the game. The audience will get it back now with 4.33 to go. Curry, maybe not smiling so much now on your right. Raleigh Dodge has reason to smile for the moment. A look at the passes. A Bear of Michigan leading Johnny Walden of New Orleans in second place. And we'll see Craig Penrose of Denver next Monday night and Steve Young of Los Angeles. The audience has not gained a yard. Their minus yardage thus far. First and 10 from the 20. As Jordan swings in motion, Shaleen, the ball carrier, and Shaleen gets the biggest play of the night thus far for New Orleans. Before that, the break has rushed four times from minus one yard, had a pass for minus three yards, and had a 10-yard penalty. They were minus 14 yards before Shaleen picked up right there, eight yards out to the 28. It's, you know, it, it is amazing, and they're still on first down. And it's got to be due to the weather, Jim, because the field position isn't as bad as the 20, that they are running the ball on first down when we, in fact, thought that they would throw the ball the majority of the time on first down. 
Buford Jordan, the lone remaining setback. There are three wide receivers in there. By the way, that's all they carry on the New Orleans roster. And here's Buford Jordan. He had a great day last week. He's got the first down. And man, he simply just ran over number 26, David Evans, the X-back. Absolutely leveled Evans. The man that got the block on this play was number 80, the wide receiver Frank Lockett, knocked two people out of the play. One, number 55, Herb Spencer, and number 98, Jackie Klein. 341 to go. All the statistics, Paul, as we all know, are on Birmingham side, including the score, but it is only 7 to nothing. And the audience is in this game to a fairly well. To spell it out for you again, they are undefeated, leading the Southern Division. The team on the other side of the line of scrimmage has won its last four in a row. They lost their first, and if they win tonight, they'll share that lead. Now after the first, Jordan first down, Buford Jordan carries the ball, Herb Spencer's got him, and an official has thrown a fly. Tom White, illegal motion. You hear that? You can hear the sounds down there, but you can hear the Birmingham team just screaming, shift left, shift left. They were reading the play, and they shifted right into Illegal the play. Illegal motion, number 80 on the offense. Penalty is declined. That's second Lockett. down. Got his second down. And moved the sticks up to the 41-yard line. Second down and seven to go. Harris Lockett, boy, has he had some games. 172 yards he's gained already this year catching the ball. Against Jacksonville, he had 255 yards. Takes a few for Jordan. Rolling in trouble. Now out of trouble and down he goes, picking up a couple of yards. Joe Cuglieri, number 95, finally put him down. And Walden has only been sacked once. That's not a sack, but he's been in trouble a lot of times tonight. And Paul, when I say sack once, I mean sack once all year. Well, I was talking about Herb Spencer and Murphy, the two linebackers. Watch number 55. He has Walton just miss, misses him. Walton's making the Buford Jordan. There's 55, Herb Spencer coming in. They're blocked by Bale. Number 87 didn't get there. Watch Buford Jordan. He moves out to try to block, but that didn't help anything because Joe Cuglieri, number 95, makes the tackle. Third down and about five to go. New Orleans looking for its second first down of the night. Shotgun. They've been in that a lot tonight. Forced into it. There's Shaleen carrying the ball. Shaleen looking for the first down and has it near midfield. Mark Shaleen out of Nebraska carries the ball out near midfield. We're appealing back to make the tackle is Mike Perko. Well, Shaleen, this is a draw of the fullback, and this is one way to, to stop. Jackie Klein gets held in right there, and, and uh, Bohannon, 41, misses the tackle. But you've got the big man, Lewis Bullard, number 72, out front block, and Shaleen picks it up. That's a good way to stop the blitz, Jim. Do, it, do some screens and draws. A little over two minutes to go. First quarter, 7-0 Birmingham. First down, New Orleans at midfield. it out here, has it tight end, Ross, the ex-Cincinnati Bengals, and Ross has got another first down at the 40-yard line. Marcus Dupree has played, carried the ball but once tonight, and then he and Jackie Klein got in a tussle. Yeah, it was for a loss. All right, here comes Ross off the line of scrimmage. He's going to run an out, out move right there. David Evans, number 26, and Herb Spencer, the linebacker, are doubling on Ross. They get there, but not after he picked up the first down. It is a driving rainstorm in Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. But it is still a good crowd. We're televised live here in Birmingham tonight, but they turned out they're sitting in the rain, and they are seeing a butte so far. 7-0 Birmingham. There's Shaleen. Up top, you can see Mike Murphy. After a gain of a yard or two, as again, New Orleans tests that number one rushing defense of the USFL. Well, they ran a triple right formation. Triple means you put three wide receivers on one side. And then they ran back to the weak side, away from the receivers. Now there's Spencer and Murphy. 56 is Murphy, 55 is Spencer. Bullard's getting, getting Spencer blocked right there, but his teammate, another linebacker, there's only two on this team, Murphy makes a tackle. Second down and seven from the 38. Here's Walden. 
Going long. Down there, reaching for this rocket, saying that Ricky Ray interfered, but there's no fly. We were talking with Dick Curry about a statement that Paul McGuire made on the air, oh, I guess a week or so ago. Someone said, how fast is Frank Lockett? He said, as fast as he has to be. And Coach Curry concurred with what you said. He said, he seems to stay even and then has the extra step to get loose. He's got that burst once he gets to the defensive back. But that time, Ricky Ray stayed right with him one-on-one, -on -one, and the ball was laid out. Couldn't get it. They say the clock officially is on the field. It shows on the clock 36 seconds to go, first quarter. Third and seven. Puts it up, and nobody's going to get it. He was getting pressure from Murphy. Put the ball. The flag is down in the backfield. And Murphy is turning to every official in sight. Let's see what it is. They're walking toward Birmingham. He might have manhandled Johnny Walton. There they go. First down. They're moving it all the way down to the 22. Tom White will make the call. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 56 on the defense, loaded ahead, first down. Poor Mike Murphy, he was the only one there. It yes. had to be he. Exactly, and, and, and the pass was thrown. First of all, it was supposed to be thrown to Charlie Smith. He was supposed to run an up pattern up the middle of the field, but he broke it off, and Walton just dumped the ball down the middle. There was absolutely nobody there. 7 nothing, but... The audience driving in the last half minute of the quarter according to the scoreboard clock. This may or may not be official. Marcus Dupree is back in. He's got the football. There goes Marcus Dupree. What a run inside the 15-yard line. Bohannon gets him, but Dupree picks up nine yards. Bothered with a hamstring pull. Expected to run the ball 14 or 15 times tonight. That is a good run. Well, that time, New Orleans, what they did is they took their tight end, Dan Ross, he was on the right side. Their extra tight end, David Bale, number 87, was also on the right side, but he goes in motion towards Ross. And what they do, they double team on the linebackers on the outside to get the pre to the outside and forces the safety to make the play. They're going to let the clock run out. And when we come back, it's going to be second down and short inside the 15 of Birmingham for New Orleans. But at the moment, as the quarter ends, much longer than Birmingham gained more yards and they trail 7-0. But that may change shortly. Second and short from the 14. Dale in motion. Marcus Dupree looking for running room. Does not get the first down. Loses the football. Belongs to Birmingham. That's at the bottom of the pile is pointing. Looks like Jackie Klein having a great night. Got up with it. Jim, does Marcus Dupree get hammered? Watch this. He's going to cut it up inside. 52 is Gooch. Dan Gooch, he's right there. He's the one that makes the pop, puts his helmet right in there, and then Jackie Klein is going to end up with the football. There he is. He's on top right now, and then he worms his way down into the bottom to get the ball. Birmingham, another big turnover forced by Dan Gooch. Has the ball at the 17. Joey Jones in motion. And that is Joe Crib trying to get outside. Crib, oh, bolts into the air as hammered as he hits to the 21 yard line. A pickup of four, and it's second down and six. They fumble the ball, New Orleans got it. Now New Orleans get it. Crib is furious. He's on the ground saying, I was down. still won't leave the field. Still talking. Let's but, watch it. All right, he's going to have Buddy Adelette, number 78, out in front of him. Here goes Joe Cribbs. Also, Perry's out there. Now watch, he dives in the air. Remember now, the ground cannot cause a fumble. Did the ball come loose there and he hit the ground? It was coming out as he was coming oh, down. That is a good call by the officials. Yes, Cribbs didn't think so, but that is a good call. And now New Orleans down 7 nothing. Gets the ball back at the 21. Two rushing defense, New Orleans. You 
Jordan in the backfield with Celine. Walden having a tough night. Going for Lockett. Lockett toward the end zone. Lockett got tangled up. Paul, I want to tell you that the man down there, Ricky Ray, has done quite a job with Frank Lockett tonight. He He's did. been right with him. There, there was some contact about the five-yard line. And a flag clear across the field. Now, that's on the side where Charlie Smith is, and Charlie Smith is being covered by Dennis Woodbury, number 21. Look out. They're walking backwards. Illegal contact, number 24 on the defense. First down. Right, illegal contact. That'll move the ball to the 16-yard line. Chuck Platten, who intercepted the pass for the touchdown, the only score thus far of the game, guilty of the illegal contact. What a crazy game. And we've got 13.53 to go in the first half. I love it. I love it. Walton. Going for Ross. No good. Good defensive play across the way by David Evans, the X-back. The fifth back that Raleigh Doss uses on nearly every single play. Well, they go four down linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs, and that man, David Evans, is the X-Fact. He is covering Dan Ross. Now watch 26. Watch the move he makes. He pushes. There's a little bump there by Ross also. And watch this play by Evans. Almost gets the ball. Second down and 10 from the 17-yard line. 7-0 Birmingham, second quarter. There it is again, just off the left hand of Dan Ross. And now Johnny Walton says we want timeout. They've got this outstanding field position after losing the ball on a... Second down, 10. Walton hands the ball off, and Shaleen does not get much. Hanging on is Pugliari, number 95. Jim, they had the blitz on again with the linebackers. There's Murphy, 56, coming in. Watch Pugliari. His job is to read. He has... The draw plays, makes a good play right there. Number 24, Chuck Clanton comes in and helps out. That's what his job is. He reads screens and draws. Third down. The ball at the 14-yard line. New Orleans, we all know, is a big play team. We can't keep waiting for one of those big plays to explode here. Nine men up on the line of scrimmage. Two just yards behind. Walden, they're coming after him. The ball is thrown across the way. It is Clinton that breaks it up. Intended for Bale, but Clinton makes his second outstanding defensive play of the night. The thing that makes this place work so well for Clinton is, is David Bale, number 87, we've got holding against the offense. I would refuse that guy, thank you. Right this time. That's right. <laughs> I'm never going to say make a punt again, I'll tell you this. There comes David Bale off the line of scrimmage. But watch what Clanton does. He plays him to the inside first. Now watch the ground that he closes on. Going up for the ball, the ball hits off his arm, then off his head. Just a super play. Mazzetti had been 6-for-6 six six in field goals before tonight. He tried a 47-yarder midway through the first quarter and missed that. And now will try a 31-yard field goal to get New Orleans on the board. Second quarter, 7-3. Then he kicks it high into the left, trying to get it before it goes out of bounds, and Birmingham knocks it out of bounds. I think it was a planned play, Paul, to get it over and maybe recover the ball. That's an odd-looking onside kick, but they just kicked it over that front line. This, this was planned. He kicked the ball up in the air, Jim, away from uh, uh, the wall that they, they, they have up there, and away from the front ball. wall and the back wall, and he put it in an area. It was a great kick by Mazzetti because the ball hit in the open field had New Orleans grabbed the ball had possession they would have had it but Earl the tight end number 89 was, was smart enough to hit the ball out of bounds Nick Curry does a lot of things including putting a play a week in from his fans who ride in from all over the country that wasn't the play that was not the play that's Nick's play ball at the 31 Stout makes the grip Stout drills the ball over the middle and a kick over the middle by Jimmy Smith Yes, Pittsburgh Steelers first down. They moved the ball into New Orleans territory at the 46. 
Jim, if I was 20 years younger, I may have been able to, to, to throw this pass because Stout had all day to throw. You think Joe Cribbs, the pass receiver, the rusher? Watch this. Here comes Joe Cribbs, and that's number 37, who is uh, uh, Johnson as a safety blitzen. Joe Cribbs, watch the block that he makes here. That's his job also to block. Look at the time that Stout has. Now you throw the ball down the open part of the field right in the, right in the middle to Jimmy Smith first down. And now the fake to Cribs again, a pump. He throws the ball out of the backfield. Looking for running room is Cribs. And Cribs gets to the 37-yard line. Almost a first down. It is second down and short. 7-3 to three, Birmingham. They've not scored offensively. The only offensive points moments ago, the 31-yard field goal of Tim Mazzetti on the drive that took four plays in a minute and a half before the field goal attempt. You know, when you have a player like Joe Cripps, his caliber, and he fumbles the ball in a crucial situation, they end up getting up, getting three New Orleans breakers. You get him back into the ball game again and start giving him the football. They did just that. There goes Cribs. There goes Cribs. Cribs inside the 25 to the 22. First down, Birmingham. Well, Jim, that's the best way I know to get him back in the ball game. He's got Leon Perry, number 30, in front of him, but watch it's a draw play to Cribs. You look at his face, he's determined. Here comes Perry, watch 30, 248 pounds. He's gonna take on the linebacker. Goodbye, linebacker. Hello, Joe Cribs. Cribs fumbles, set up the three points, and this is how his ball said he gets him back in the game. He's just following the big man out in front. That's Leon Perry getting a block on Williams, 51, the linebacker, and then watch Joe Cribs do his thing. Jim Smith goes wide left, Toller comes to the right. First down from the 22. Cribs again. Cribs gallops down to about the 16-yard line. A pickup of six. It's second and four, Birmingham. Well, Dick Corey's kind of looking a little worried there. He's talking to his offense, but his defense is, is not holding uh, Birmingham Stallion. Joe Cribs can hit a hole as quick as anyone I've ever seen, and he's not afraid of jumping in there either. Well, I'm going to beg to differ with you for a moment, because Birmingham has not yet scored offensively, so defense of New Orleans is not that bad. No, no, they're not, not that bad. bad. Now, remember, they're the number two team in the USFL in rush, against the rush on defense. You can see the big man was Larry Williams, number 51, the inside linebacker, forced into the starting role by the injury to Bill Gump. Third and two. Well, what Birmingham did in this game, they are a trapping team like Michigan, where I'm saying, when I'm saying the guards come out, they pull, they trap, they'll bring a tackle down and trap. But Raleigh Dodge is trying to do this evening with this team, New Orleans. They're trying to block straight ahead, man-on-man -man blocking, fewer traps, and try to get to the hole quick with Joe Cripp. Less than nine and a half minutes to go. Two tight ends. Here's Stout rolling this way. He can pick up the first down himself and scrambles down to about the 10, and he's got the first down. Stout is an outstanding runner, averaging better than six yards a carry. charge this is a bootleg they take everybody to the left here comes Adlet out in front of Stout now Stout's going to roll he's got an option now to throw the ball or run with it the receiver's covered he's got you got Buddy Adlet out in front of you you better run with the football Buddy Adlet comes up takes Ray Phillips out of the play and they pick up the first down this you know what he slid on his own down to the 10 and they moved the ball back as though he'd been knocked down to the 11 and may not be a first down but it is a first down because he slid on his own to the 10 and they moved the ball back Slid, as you say, you're right, all the way to the end zone to score a touchdown, make sure until he's touched. In any event, it is first down. The only difference is the yard, 7-3, to three, Birmingham, and this is the best drive for the Stallions tonight. If they win, they'll be in a flat-out tie. The Southern Division of the Eastern Conference with the audience, which at the moment is undefeated, with a long way to go. Toller comes wide right, Smith to the left. The backs are split on first down. Big 
complete by Scott for the first down, and now another first down at the goal line. That's about as pretty a bootleg as I've seen. When you, I mean, and that was run all the way. That was not a pass play. That was Stout carrying the ball. Big man, 6'4", 215. This man weighs 200 and close to 250 pounds. The offensive line, they are really driving off. Pat Sandin is one of the few traps, and all Perry has to do is cross the plane. He's in. There's a close-up of Stout barking things out. Here comes Perry. Take the big horse. He's in. Guy out in front, who's that? Number 20, Joe Cribbs. And a Miller. It is either Perry and Cribbs or Cribbs and Perry or Stout on his own. The extra point, 8 3 to go. That's the first offensive points put on the board by Birmingham. They have seven more on an interception. Bruce Miller will take this one at the six. Miller slips and falls backwards and finally is wrestled down from behind. As flashing over was Banks. There is Leon Perry. He got hurt earlier tonight. Remember, he got sandwiched, was up, but for one play, had just scored the touchdown. Remember last week we did it. Perry got hurt for one play again. We thought he was really yeah. hurt. Then oh. all of a sudden he's back. The audience and their fans waiting for their breakers to get going. Birmingham has now outgained them total offense 107 to the audience 47 yards, but they have total midway through the second period. Mike Murphy and Herbie Spencer. The thing about Birmingham's defense, why they are number one against the rush, is attributed to the defensive line, Purifoy, Cuglieri, Klein, Perko, and the two linebackers, Murphy and Spencer. Coming up at halftime, Tom Meese will have USFL stars in action, plus a special NCAA report on what's going on between Georgetown and Houston in the NCAA, which it's going to start any time now. We'll keep you prize of the score here on our telecast. Second down seven, but the time has run out on Johnny Walton. It's going to be second down and 12. This veteran quarterback let the time run out on him, trying to call an audible at the line of scrimmage. Remember what you said in the first quarter, Jim? When Birmingham goes to an eight-man defensive line, when they put everybody on the line of scrimmage, Walton's going to audibleize out of a run play into another passing situation. He was trying to audibleize there. They put the two linebackers in the line of scrimmage. Walton couldn't get the play call. And so it is second down and 12 from the 26. 6.44 to go, first half. Lockett, shut out tonight so far. Comes out wide to the left. He's been averaging well over 100 yards a game these last two games. 255 against Jacksonville, 155 yards last week. was back with him as he's been on other times and it appears that David Evans the X-back has the assignment that an outside linebacker normally would have and that is stick with a linebacker. It's easier for Ross who in size is 6'1", 170 and has a lot of speed. Jim, the biggest problem Johnny Walton is facing right now, we know that he's an excellent quarterback and he's got tremendous receivers. He does not have the time to throw. They're blitzing Birmingham I say they, that's Birmingham on almost every single play.
five-yard line to the 44, and the Breakers pick up a big first down. Third and 12, deep in their own territory. It's first and 10 in Birmingham territory. Here come the blitzes again. Murphy and Spencer, 55. And Shaleen trying to force him, but you see Spencer down, back up again. Sees Charlie Smith being covered one-on-one -on -one by David Evans. And there's just no way that David Evans can stay with Smith when you get the one-on-one -on -one coverage. You go to the middle to the guy that's open. I'm sure you've noticed it, but Pure Four tonight is playing the left defensive side and Perko the right defensive side. Just what they were not doing one week ago. They change that. Change it. Three, three, three. First down. Walden, deep drop. Looks, thrills the ball to Bale. Bale still on his feet and gets inside the 40 yard line. Pick up a five for David Bale. It's second and five. Perko and Evans in on the stop. 5.45 on the clock. 14-3 Birmingham, first half. Birmingham trying to climb into a tie, the Southern Division of the Eastern Conference with undefeated New Orleans at 5-1 after tonight. Well, that time, Johnny Walton had time to throw the ball, but everybody downfield was covered, so he dumped it off to David Bale, his back up tight end. Lock it, and Spencer both wide to the right. He did have one good run of nine yards. He had another one in which Jackie Klein simply put him back on his heels. Third and short, about two yards. Wow, he three with that bad hamstring that they've been using new type of equipment on. He eased the pain, getting back in action. that number one rushing defense inside the 30-yard line. And the Breakers are beginning to put it together. They had one big play, third and 12. They took care of that. And now they move down where time is called because Evans is down. Second down and ten. There's Johnny Walton. Jerry here's a head coach at Elizabeth State where he also played ball. Our minute MVP last week, Carapoy. He's on Hurley. Take a look at this. Is there holding there? Never. No, not, not a whole <laughs> lot. Of, look at the official looking right at him. <laughs> Don't hold me, man. Ball remains at the 26-yard line. It is second down. A wet crowd, but an enthusiastic crowd. Had a good ball game. Crazy at times. Anthony Steeles is in there now for New Orleans, the back number 33. They're going to throw to Anthony Steeles. Steeles is knocked down as he picks up the first down inside the 15-yard line. Chuck Clinton put the hit on Anthony Steeles. Anthony Steeles came out of the backfield in a triple formation. He was the wing, came down the field, and no one was on him. And Chuck Clinton closes on him. Take a look. Anthony Steeles is to the right of the screen, or left of the screen. You don't see him. Walton read it. Watch the pop he takes, though, after he catches the ball. That's the head and shoulders. I think you're going the wrong way, Anthony. Now we'll see why that play works. Here comes the pass protection. Johnny Walton goes back. How many red shirts are there? And that's Murphy getting nailed. Excuse me, that wasn't... Yeah, that was Murphy. First down from the 15. Walton. Throws it down and almost intercepted. Flag down. The man there was Woodbury. He's got four interceptions. And somebody might have been guilty of something. I think you might have Evans guilty of, guilty of an illegal chuck downfield or pass interference. Number 26. I remember in the USFL, pass interference is 15 yards and first down. Not at the spot of the foul. So the mark it off. Half the distance. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. Pass interference. Number 24 on the defense. First down. That was Clinton. First and goal. The way he called it. Well, I had that Evans and Clanton there, but Clanton came over and, and hit the receiver after he had missed the ball. 
First down, New Orleans has been in this position tonight. They trail 14 to 3, but they've got a first down at the seven yard line. Now, time is it called from the sideline? Tampa Bay has fallen on hard times. They've lost three in a row. Jacksonville lost its fourth and the last second of play to Memphis, which won its second on Saturday night. Since Saturday night, Oklahoma knocked off Houston in overtime. We were concerned about Doug Williams being hurt out at Arizona, but he came back to have a great night. Chicago scored in the last moments. Washington missed an extra point and a field goal because of a bad snap. Chicago won its first. Washington still winless. We told you about Memphis and Jacksonville. I hope you saw that Saturday night. Denver took Arizona and George Allen, 17-7. And elsewhere yesterday, in other games that you did not see as it went off the screen, Pitts, uh, Philadelphia took Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh defeated Oakland 28-14, Michigan buried San Antonio, and New Jersey spoiled the debut of Steve Young 26-10 over Los Angeles. First down at the seven-yard line. Jim, now Birmingham goes with four linebackers. They've got uh, Murphy in there, they've got Sales in there, they've got Gooch in there, and they've got Spencer in there. Dale is wide to the right, Lockett, and Smith come to the left. Dale, the man in motion, the kick back to Buford Jordan. Jordan breaks some tackles. Jordan gets into the end zone. Broke a couple of tackles and has his second rushing touchdown of the year. Buford Jordan. Dave Purefoy was outside along with Herb Spencer. And take a look at Purefoy. He has a first shot at Buford. He couldn't can't get him. Spencer overruns the play. And then Buford Jordan gets by Dan Gooch, number 52, and gets into the end zone. Touchdown. It is now 14-9. And we got another Birmingham player hurt on the field. Excuse me. I said that was Spencer that overran it with 56 Murphy. All for a long while, midway through this quarter, Birmingham, number one on the rushing defense. As you take a look at the man down, looks like Woodbury. Well, they were going to go for two. They, they were going to go for the one, and then Mazzetti left the field. They brought Johnny Walton and his offensive team back on again. But don't don't rule out a fake here, huh? They've tried other things. There's Mazzetti. He is 16 for 16 this year. And now we resume. thus far he started out at 439 so he has gained the difference between 439 and 471 where Harrell is Walker New Jersey 411 he got hurt yesterday with a bruised shoulder long of Arizona they had a bad day rushing yesterday and now Mazzetti will kick the ball remember last time he tried a fake in that he did not kick it long and kicked it over the initial line of the first five men and they're kicking the ball Back from, well, is he going to put it on a 35? He's got it on a 35. Jim, Birmingham is in that same situation again. Now, they've got five men up around the 50-yard line or the 49-yard line of, of New Orleans. And then they have four men with Perko on one on the outside, on one side, and Cuglieri 95 on this side. So they're all linemen up there, but th there's that hole again over on the right-hand side. They've got Leon Perrin, a few people, and... Gant and Johnson are not playing deep at all. They couldn't do anything about recovering a ball should Mazzetti try yet another strange kick designed to get the ball back, but he's going to kick this away. That's Gant. That's Gant. Up the 15-yard line. Gant, the captain of the special teams, gets out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Very close to the two-minute warning. 2.35 to go, 14 to 10 the score. Remember, we will keep you updated on what is going on in the NCAA championship game out of Seattle between Georgetown and Houston. So if you like your football, stick with us. You won't miss the scores of the basketball. And Tom Mees at halftime, aside from the USFL Stars in Action, will bring you a special NCAA report. Joey Jones, they haven't thrown to him tonight. Wide to the right. Smith to the left. Stout with the ball. Crosses away. 
And they say that the catch was made by Jim Smith. He kept the feet inbounds, first down, 37-yard line. By the way, as Birmingham gets the ball back, Joe Cribbs has carried for 32 yards and has caught the ball for 15 more, averaging six and a half on the carry and seven and a half on the rush. As you can see that Dennis Woodbury is leaving, but leaving walking well, although I'm sure that his spatial area is hurting. There's Cribbs going to the outside. Good run, few yards as a result, with a tackle being made by number 51, Lawrence Williams. Oh, he put a move to get back to the outside, and Ben Tatum got, got to him. Two minutes to go in this game, which thus far has been long, exciting, and bizarre. The score, 14 to 10. Birmingham, one outstanding drive for a score. New Orleans has had one outstanding drive for a score. Birmingham has scored on an intercepted pass. The audience has gotten a field goal as a result of a Birmingham fumble. Can you believe this crowd on this in this type of night? It's, it's just unbelievable. Good football game, miserable night. Fake the trip, Stout's got some running room, now fires the ball to the side. Smith has it. They say he's out of bounds. Third down and nine. Jim, the question is now, could he have come down in bounds? Now, Smith, if he's pushed out of bounds, and they take away the right for him to come down in bounds, all right, that's Tatum out, outside pushing him back out to the corner. All right, let's just take a look at Smith now. Watch his feet. He's got the ball. Ah, you know what the problem was? He did Jackals, not have possession right. of the ball. Jackals, actually called by the official. Watch his hands. Watch the ball. He does not have possession of the ball there until he's out of bounds. Here's Cribbs running a draw play, trying to get the first down. He's got the first down and more. Joe Cribbs inside the 30-yard line, down to the 25. The market at the 24. First down, Joe Cribbs having an outstanding night. Jim, when you have a man that fumbles a football, then on that last drive, went on that great run of his, when he's pumped up and ready to go, give him the football. Because Cribbs, what a great job he does in the middle of the field. And I think it was Lawrence Williams, the linebacker, number 51. He just made a fool out of him. Cribbs has carried the ball seven times for 71 yards against the number two rushing defense in the league. That's New Orleans. there with him was Miller. Stout is talking to Tom White. Stout is going to talk to Joey Jones because Joey Jones was standing in the right-hand corner of the end zone and there was not a soul near him. You think Joey might tell him that? Sorry about Joey. we got to talk about Joey for just a moment. He's only 5'8", weighs 165, and as a newspaper here in Birmingham said, he is not a hunk. But Hal Hayes of the Birmingham office says, you should see the letters from the young ladies who just think of Joey as cute as can be got a girlfriend though. yes in that night second down and 10 117 to go first half safety blitz stout looking throwing for the end zone and smith and they just say that he tripped over the defensive back bruce miller that miller did not trip him smith got his feet entangled and it is third down and 10 now, is this ball out of reach? Take a look at it. Here comes Smith coming down on Miller. Miller moves to the inside. Now, Smith has got the position. They're running. They're not touching at all. Watch their feet get tangled up. He just clicks his heel right there. Smith goes down. The ball is out of the back of the end zone. Here comes Joey. Jones into the lineup. And the way he dashed on the field, he may have the information. Let's see what they do. Remember what Paul said. Jones is coming to the same side on third down and 10. But now they have a back. Eric Johnson coming up to play the head off. Whoop. They're going to call time. Stout saw something, too. But Smith goes to the left. Joey Jones goes to the right. And Daryl Mason, the man that Paul's talking about, is on the right side. Third down, 10. There's Cribs, and he's not going to get out of the backfield. Not going to get out of the backfield. Good job. Now, probably said we'll throw that play out. Ray Phillips knew exactly what was going to happen there. Damn it, I didn't want that. 
Well, I won't say what he said at first, but what he said at the end was, I didn't want that. No, he didn't want that. We're sure he didn't want it. Third down, make it fourth down. That was a third down play. And now Stout comes to the sidelines again. This will be a 45-yard attempt. Miller is two for three, hit none over 40 yards thus far, and this will be 45-yard attempt if indeed he does try. And he's going to try from 45 yards out with the wind behind him and does not quite reach it. The 45-yard field goal attempt, no good, and the audience takes over with 55 seconds to go. But then remember one thing, too, that Birmingham gets the ball back in the second half on the kickoff. Looking for the big play. They've had some plays. They're in the ballgame at 14 to 10, but New Orleans hasn't broken off that big play. Lockett has been shut out so far. Shotgun. A little dancing around there and racing out is Anthony Steeles, who's had the ball one time before. They're in a hurry-up offense here. That was on a pass coming out of the backfield. 38 seconds to go. Let's see if they just keep it on well or in a shotgun, but they ran from the shotgun before. Now they're going to throw from the shotgun. Walden puts it on the sideline across the way, and the catch is made over there by number 82, Marion Brown, who that's only his fourth catch of the year. He had two of those last week, and they both set up scores in their overtime win over Chicago. Jim, in this formation, they got Dan Ross, the tight end, is back in the backfield with Johnny Walton, and they have a play where he comes out in, into the flat, just comes out of the backfield, and Walton hits him on it. First down, 42-yard line, 28 seconds left. He's back there with him. He's right to the left of Johnny Walton, oh. right of your screen. Not coming out this time. Oh, the slip and almost picked off. Almost picked off. Looked like Mark Thomas had a chance to get it, and Thomas couldn't hold on to it. The receiver slipped, and it was right at Thomas, who's filling in for Woodbury on that left corner. On a good day, Thomas might have been hard-pressed to catch this ball because Walton fired a ball at Marion Brown. And Marion Brown is going to slip and fall down. Watch, watch how fast this ball comes through Thomas's arm. Here it comes. Here comes Tom, Thomas. Whoops. <laughs> Where'd it go? That's right. Second down and ten. Walton again, going back. He's going to put it up long this time the sidelines and no one will get to it the nearest man back there as you can see again was marion brown and a couple of red jerseys and it is third down and 10 to go and 16 seconds left on the clock here in the first half Omni standing by with the usfl stars in action and the special report of what's going on out in seattle between georgetown and houston and that NCAA championship basketball game. I know who you like. Well, living in the Washington area, how'd you know that? I well, our director, Houston. Mark Payton, lives in Houston. Who do you think he wants? He wants Houston. Here's Walden again. Walden coming out of the, making the good catch across the way is number 85, Charlie Smith. And that's enough for a first down with 10 seconds to go. Well, you hit it right the ball on inside. I'm sorry, Paul. No, move the ball inside Birmingham territory to the 48. Excuse me. You hit it right on the head when you said a great catch because it is raining very, very hard, and he had to turn around and make the catch. He being Charlie Smith, number 85. There is Stout. Run well tonight. Didn't run one play that Raleigh Doss wanted to run, however. Took him out of a possible field goal, which they missed from long distance. He's going to put it way up in the air, and everybody's down there is red shirts. Clanton. Tell you one thing, Birmingham is its own worst enemy physically tonight. They are killing each other, running each other. Uh, Spencer, as we know, did a job on David Evans, who came back to play. Woodbury is still in the locker room because Gooch, another linebacker, hit him in the face with the heel. Jim, I'm not trying to be funny about this, but that's what you get sometimes when you have an aggressive defense. They're going after people with no regard for their body. Four seconds to go in the half. 14 to 10, Birmingham. Second down and 10, New Orleans. The ball at the 48 of Birmingham. Alley -oop. Teeing the ball up at the 35-yard line. 
We look down and see Woodbury stretching out along the sidelines, and so Dennis Woodbury apparently will be able to come back and play once New Orleans gets the football. We also learn not only is Woodrow Wilson out because of the knee, but Charles Harbison, their fine, strong safety, number 42, got his bell ringing. He may not be back in the oh, second half. Oh, boy, what a night. All right, 30 minutes of football left. Is that it? Tight end, Bale, playing on special teams. Go to work, Go to work. From the 11 yard line. First down, Joey Jones comes to the right, Jim Smith goes to the left. Cribs 20, Perry 30 in the backfield, Stout of course. He's your quarterback, Darrell Mason 81 the tight end. And now a New Orleans breaker is down. And That's it looks Phillips. like it may be Ray Phillips. I'll tell you what a great block that Leon Perry, number 30, the fullback, got for Cripps. I don't know if you're going to see it. There's that. Let gets a good block. Perry gets an excellent block. Rustic is going to make the play. But Joe Cribbs just gets downfield. Heavy. It is still heavy. Estimated attendance, 28,100. And I will say... Great job by the fans here in Birmingham with 28,000, especially in this great weather. It looks like the rain is let up just a little bit, but it rained hard through the whole first half. Third down and two. Cribs on the same play again as the first down. Flag down after Cribs goes down, maybe face pass. Three times they've run this play, Jim, and you might as well run it till Cribs can't run anymore, and then just run it one more time just for the heck of it, because they got Perry coming out, Adelette coming out, and they're just wiping out the defensive line. Here they come. Take a look at it. This time it wasn't Perry, it was Sainton, or uh, Adelette, it was Sainton, but Perry gets an excellent block. This is the big blocking fullback at 248 pounds. Look at Perry, he's stumbling and still trying to find people. on the defense, first down. The call is against Rustic for face pass. That moves the ball to the 49-yard line of New Orleans. 13.28 to go, third quarter. Birmingham by four. Joey Jones comes out wide to the right as they are having Cribs out of the game for the moment. Replaced by Gant. Jones has not been thrown to. Lockett has been shut out for New Orleans. And here comes Stout. Looking, looking. Has to go out of bounds. First down, Smith gets up. He's been catching a lot of balls across the middle tonight, but that's not enough for the first down. Jim, it was number 81, Darrell Mason, and they're going to be about uh, a half a yard short. And with it, with the best rushing offense in the USFL, here's the decision that coaches do not want to make. Raleigh Dutch wants to see a measurement first of all to see how much they have to go. But here's the decision. When you have this type of football team, and they sure can run the football. Well, look how far they've got to run it. That far. That may help him in his decision. What's 30 look big, like to you? With a big cliff stout in there. Joe Cribbs, Leon Perry, and the fans saying go. All right, Raleigh. Mason got you that far. He's leaving them in there. You know, you've got a lot of choices. You've got Cribbs that, that, that can blast in the middle because a lot of his plays are between the tackles. Just watch the moves of Joe Cripp. He's getting blocking downfield. That's that left 78, but watch this. There aren't too many people that make cuts like that, my friend. Second.
second, or maybe they make it third down and about a yard to go. 14 to 10, Birmingham, and they are driving at the 11 of New Orleans. Look who's got it again. Same play, does not get back to the line of scrimmage this time. The man who made the play is the linebacker deep in the territory, and that is Larry Williams, number 51. Now, they got to go or kick? Well, this crowd wants them to go. They know they've got the strong rushing offensive team. And they They're going to go. They're going to go. That's the guard and down marker there. About a yard to go, Earl Gant checks in. Leon Perry time. Boy, this is maybe more of a gamble than it was at the 40-yard line. This is a good, stout yard. And Leon Perry banging for the 10, and you'll just have to wait to see where they mark the football. He, That's what it's going to depend on. He has it by the nose of the ball. If you take the official number 18 on the right-hand side, and 18. He's a head linesman. That's Newhouse. They have the first down. It's the foot that you take a look at where he marked it. It just keeps going, gets down to about the seven. We saw it against Tampa Bay. It's Birmingham football, a long drive. It hasn't paid off with a score yet, but before they get another playoff, this will have taken up the first seven minutes of the second half. Okay, Leon Perry's coming in. What they have is three tight ends, Birmingham. They've got Mason, Robin Earl, and they're using Battaglia, the guard, is the other tight end. Who has caught a touchdown pass this year from that position. Stout, Stout, under pressure, throws for the touchdown! And guess who got it? Joe Quinn! Mike Cribbs is having. What do you think about the men and MVP if the game holds up this way? Seven minutes, 32 seconds in this drive, Jim. And now the rollout by Stout. He is being chased in the backfield. But Stout gets the ball off. Look at Cribbs all alone. Watch how he comes down inbound. Joe Cribbs. He's done it all. He's blocked. He's running with the ball. And now he catches a touchdown pass. A 91-yard drive in better than the seven minutes. And two gambles on fourth down and short paid off as Miller comes in to add the extra point. And Birmingham, which has never trailed, now leads 21 to 10, halfway through the third quarter. The kickoff and the return. And coming out and back across the 30-yard line is Shields. All right, let's take a look at it. Now, you're going to see Buddy Adeletti pulled out to get the, get the job done. Joe Cripps, and that's Marcus Merrick, is trying to cover Joe Cripps. Number 23 is Jones that's going to come in and try to force it. Buddy Adelaide just gets a piece of him. But this pass is thrown as Stout is going away, Jim, not to Cripps, but away from him and puts the ball on the money. And there's Joseph. Breakers by 11. And by the way, the rain has stopped. Might be a better deal right now for Johnny Walden and crew. They live by the big play. Lockett has been shut out so far. Pitch back, fake reverse, and Marcus Dupree carries the ball across the 35-yard line to the 36. Give him a gain of five, and Dupree is staying in the game. Scoring drive, 89 yards, 7.22, and the pass to Cribs for six. Spencer hanging on. We understand that Akeem the Dream Olajuwon, as Houston is losing at the moment to Georgetown, is on the bench with four personal fouls. Down in Dreamland, and it's also in the truck. <laughs> I was down there. I'll tell you right now, best rip in the country. 37-yard line. Third down and three for New Orleans. They're down by 11, 540 to go third quarter. Johnny Walton's tough. 
sit down and take a blow. And here comes Herb Spencer again, Jim. Nobody blocks Spencer. Watch this. He forces the tight end Ross to the inside. And take a look at it. The back never picked him up. Shaleen, and watch where he hits him. Right in the chest. His helmet hits him in the chin. And down he goes. Woodward back to throw, looking down the sidelines here. And it is no good, and the flag is down. should have go against Birmingham and first down for New Orleans. What Birmingham is complaining about is no harm, no foul, but he pushed him in the back, and that is a foul. You cannot touch the man. Take a look at it. He gives him a shove. He's doing it, Ricky Ray, as he's going down. Now, wait a minute, Birmingham's here. They, they don't realize it's only a 15-yard penalty. Yeah. They moved all the way down to the 20. It's now they're been coming that back. kind of night, Paul. They've lined up wrong to take the kick off both teams. Birmingham, many of them thinking that it's at the spot of the foul. Riding it outside is Marcus Dupree. And Dupree gets some yardage. It's down to about the 33-yard line, a gain of seven yards, and it's second down and three. Poor Dennis Woodward. Dennis Woodward saw him coming to the outside. Watch what he tries to do. He tries to cut out Marcus Dupree's legs from underneath him. Watch. Watch number 21. He said, oops, oops, I got him by myself. I'm going to just block him. Wrong. That's not going to happen. Fred Bohannon is trying to push him out of Marcus Dupree out of bounds, and he had to get help. Second down and three. The audience putting together a drive. Lockett still has not caught a ball, is wide to the right. Charlie Smith to the left. Take Lockett out of that offense and the audience suffers. Fits back, Dupree fakes the handoff. Dupree's got the first down and bowls down to the 21-yard line. First down, New Orleans. Ricky Ray came in to make the stop. Here's the fake reverse again. Dupree, and just take a look at it. He's got the ball in the right hand. He fakes to Smith coming around, and watch this Herb Spencer. He can't get there. No one can. And all of a sudden, you got Ricky Ray doing the same thing that Woodbury did. Said, Wait a minute. This guy weighs 240 pounds. Smith right, Lockett left. Jalene on Buford Jordan in the backfield. across the middle, no good, and you can see the man for whom it was intended. Charlie Smith, number 85, cutting in from the right side. Woodbury, the man who got the heel in his face from one of his own linebackers, made the defensive play. Second down and 10. Raleigh docks along the sidelines. His team leads by 11, but here come the undefeated breakers knocking at the door. Okay, now wait. Shaleen is out of the ball game. Steels is in the backfield. Remember last time he came in. In the first half, they threw to him coming out of the backfield. He has carried the ball once. Steels is tipping. No trying to block. There's a pass across the middle, and that is complete. That's going to be Ross getting up. And a tackle made there by David Evans, the X-back. Ross has caught a couple of big passes in this drive. And that's close to a first down. It is going to be third down and not too far, about a yard or less at the 11-yard line, actually inside the 11. Oh, we got a game coming up. It's We've already got a game. It's 21-10, but here's New Orleans right back in it. And as we said, the rain has stopped, which just benefits Johnny Walton and his whole crew. Touchdown easily. Jordan steps into the end zone. And he has got a second touchdown of the night. I'll tell you right now, the guy, Joe Cuglieri, was held right in the play. It, uh, and along with Dave Purifoy, they're, they're very upset. But this is a great run. Take a look at it. They just run with Buford Jordan. There is a hole right at the line of scrimmage. Buford Jordan goes in and nobody touches him. Excellent call. Good drive by New Orleans. And the 
Rossetti had had the extra point. He hasn't missed it a long while. Hasn't missed it all this year. 3-10 to go, third quarter. 21-17. Four total yards as you look at the third quarter statistics. Joe has rushed for 135 yards and caught passes for 26. An incredible night for a man who went to school just down the road in Auburn, Alabama. Now to third down and 11 as Joey Jones lost the yard. Ball at the 43-yard line of New Orleans. Stout, not pressured at all. Drills it over there. What a catch by Smith. With Rustic hanging all over him. First down at the 25. Running to get outside. Cribs. Cribs picks up three or four yards. Gets down about the 22-yard line. Tackle made there again by Daryl Wilkerson, number 75. Joy Jones wide to the right, and caught a pass tonight, nor has Frank Lockett of New Orleans, Smith to the left. Stout back on second down. Stout in a crowd, and it's going to be, oh, I thought it was going to be picked off. Thought it was going to be picked off by Larry Williams. Had the ball, it popped out. Stout almost suffered his third interception of the year. New Orleans almost stopped Birmingham. Tell you one, one thing right now, Daryl Mason became a defensive back. He does a great job. Lawrence Williams, number 51, has the ball. But watch what Mason does. He rips the ball out of his hand. You go from offense to defense. That's a great adjustment by the offensive tight end. Third down and eight to go. 21-17 Birmingham. They've got the football on the 22 of New Orleans. First down. Cribs is stopped. Led by Jeff Gaylord. on the outside and then Lane picks up the first down almost scored a touchdown he's looking around for the marker saying I got it I got it put the ball at the 12 yard line first down Birmingham up by four make the crib stout under pressure ball batted away by Wilkerson and incomplete There. I like the adjustment. The, the, the whole team came except for two guys. They sent nine men that time at South. The only two were the corner men on the outside. Miller was one on Smith. South steps up inside. And watch it. You're absolutely right. Smith goes from offense back to defense. Third down and ten. The fake got them the first down of the twelve. Two downs later, they're still at the 12. Sending Jim Smith out to the right, Joey Jones to the left. New Orleans is coming up on the line again. Stop looking for Smith in the end zone and can't get to it. Lindell Jones was chasing him, but never would have had a shot, but it was just going too far past. And here comes Bob, okay, here comes Bobby Lane again. Not twice in a row. No, no, no. Now you kick it. <laughs> now you kick it. But if they do kick it and make it, remember, they're not only within a touchdown, but they're within a touchdown and a two-point conversion of New Orleans going ahead should the breakers come back. This would be a 29-yard attempt by Danny Miller. They got it six yards closer is all they did. for Scott Norwood, 24-17, Birmingham. Well, he hit the ground, but he was not touched yet, so that's why the ball is still in play. Had he been touched when he hit, 
then the ball would have been dead there because the ground can't cause a bubble. Good and call. That rain is of no help tonight to New Orleans, and we said it would not be, and it has not been. 24-17, fourth quarter, first and goal to go. Perry banging away, and Perry scores! His second touchdown of the night. Uh, he gave the ball to Cripps, so Cripps, Cripps could bust the ball. Jim, watch Perry's leg. For all you young players out there, you want to know what leg drive is and what you have to do. Watch his leg. They don't stop moving. He's hit. He's hit again. He's hit again. And then he still gets into the end zone. That's determination. Undefeated New Orleans in danger going down to the first defeat. If that does happen, then there's time to go. 947. There would be a tie to Southern Division. But that slippery ball to a team that goes for the big play, as opposed to the team that likes to keep it on the ground, it'd have to favor Birmingham. Miller to add the extra point and does. 9.47 left in the game. 31 to 17. Miller kicks off. Ball is returned by Steeles across the 25 to the 27 yard line. made by Jones again. Max now gets two calls coming off the bench on special teams. Well, that rain, Walt let the ball slip out of his hands and the Stallions were alert to recover. Perry banged it in. They've got a 14-point lead with nine and a half minutes to go. And in the rain, Johnny Walden and company will have to come back. They are 73 yards away from a score at the moment. Three wide receivers. it up and it's intercepted by Clanton his second of the night he takes over the lead league with five he returned it early on four touchdowns and the Alabama folks love the man from Auburn well I think they were throwing the ball is that Brown number 82 yes it is and Clanton's playing center field again but watch the catch it's a one-handed catch and a driving racer maybe the gloves do help Jim because Clanton has gloves on. The audience had the ball for 16 seconds going outside. Leon Perry suddenly decides he's got an outside move and speed. But it'll be third down and about six to go. Jim, he just runs out of the arms of McLean, number 73, the defensive end. Watch McLean. That's 248 pounds. He's gone. He's gone by. Number 52, Ray Phillips gets over and makes the play. 28,100 paid their way in. A lot of those have gone home in this driving rainstorm now that it's 31-17, but you would think there's 78,100 here. It is a big, noisy crowd. Don't go home too early. The Orleans Breakers can come back in there. Oh, they did against Chicago. They did against Chicago. Here's Stout. Stout fires. Oh, he's got his man in between a couple of men. be a little upset on the turn of events down at the other goal line. Okay, here comes the cross trap. Italia comes in. Here goes Perry, and he gets a block, and, and the inside Saint and also is in there, but he had to let... But Jim, the one thing about Birmingham, you don't, when you're behind 14 points with a little less than seven and a half minutes to go, you don't want them with the ball because they lead the league in time of possessions with almost 36 minutes a game. On the 34-yard line. Second down, a yard to go. The fake to Perry stops going for it all. To Cribs, knocked away on a good play by number 37, Eric Johnson. They had Cribs over the middle, and Johnson. Third down and short, Joe Cribs has the first down. Now you can see Adelette from the bottom of the heap saying, we got the first down. And they took Robin Earl, the extra tight end, and brought him in motion and ran him up into the hole. At There's this, Robin Earl. At this point, Joe Cribbs may have as much as the entire New Orleans squad. Cribbs has, let's see, 572 yards total. 
He had 255 against Jacksonville. He had 155 last week against Chicago, and he is 0 0 0 tonight. They may be running. They got Battaglia, number 59, who is the guard. He's playing tight end on this weak side. Third down and six to go. Number 28. Here's Cribs again. Cribs trying to get outside. Cannot get outside. And there's a good play there by Lawrence Williams, number 51, replacing the injured Bill Gump. And it's fourth down. And Stout, can you believe it? 31 17 is furious with himself. Yeah, they are coming off. They're going to kick a field goal or try a field goal. Do we, would we dare see another fake? I doubt it. I doubt it. What we're looking at is the probability, not the actuality yet, the probability that it'll be 5 and 1. New Orleans and Birmingham at the end of this game sharing the lead in the Southern Division of the Eastern Conference. Johnny Walton pulled one out last week, sent it in overtime and won there. That was against, at that time, the witness blitz. These are the Stallions who are trying to win their fifth in a row. A 44-yard attempt by Miller. The ball is up, and he does not have it. Four or four to go. The Breakers get the ball back. They're down by two touchdowns, 31 to 7. When their team is about to knock off the only undefeated team in the league, they hope, but Walton is back. One other try here, throwing the ball out of the backfield to Anthony Steeles, and he is dragged down. Dragged down by number 55, Herbie Spencer, after a gain of two yards. All right, they're going to hurry up offense. We're going to talk about something that Coach Murray told us earlier. We mentioned about the number of plays, Jim. They've only had 49 plays going into this one here. New Orleans. Play 50. Walden dumps it out of the backfield for Steeles. Steele's trying to get outside and is being ridden out of bounds by Ricky Ray. But keep in mind, with 3.18 to go, that two-point conversion, because they're 14 now, but they can get a quick one, get another one, they can go for two. But they've got to do something they haven't been able to do much of the night, and that is move the ball against the defense of Birmingham. They stop the clock because they, the balls are wet and they want to get a dry ball in, even though Steele's did not get out of bounds. So... Now that's 50 plays, and Birmingham has run 66 plays. A lot of the folks are getting out of the rain, heading home, but they head home happy. First down, New Orleans at their own 42. Walden over the middle and caught across the middle by Dan Ross, who has had a good night tonight. Lock has been shut out, but Ross is not. That's another first down. They'll move the sticks. I tell you what, if they score in a hurry here, this ball game is still up for grabs. I'm telling you, New Orleans is the fourth quarter team. They can come back down the field. There's Walden going for Smith. Battle for it. Ball is loose, incomplete. You can see the men over around them. Jim Dennis Woodbury all would have had the interception except Chuck Clanton hit him when, when the ball came in his head. Now, it looked like it. They were throwing to Smith down the field. Charlie, or Dutch, excuse me, yeah, Charlie Smith down the field. But just take a look at, there's Woodbury. He's got the ball, and then Clanton comes over and hammers him. He wanted a third interception of the night. Clanton did. Dick Corey's team, he wants him to get in there. Look at this. Now, here they, oh, they oh here's this. Line. Look at this formation. They've got four men here. Shotgun. Birmingham doesn't know what to do with the defense, but Shaleen can't catch the ball. Jim, this was going to be what they call this play. This is one that somebody sent in. Now, what they do is they're going to take Shaleen out of there. They put the line on one side, Shaleen in, in the middle. You see Shaleen back there with Walton? And he's going to try as a middle screen. But Murphy, the linebacker, watch what he does. He's the guy in the middle. He sees Shaleen coming out. That's his man. So he goes right for Shaleen. We also have offensive linemen downfield, may I add? But Murphy played it very, very well. Now we got a third down and ten. Whoops, hold it. Looked like a man trying to pass block there all of a sudden. Well, Jackie Klein came across the line and went in front of Ray Horton, and Ray Horton moved. Jackie Klein did exactly what he wanted to do. It has not been a good night thus far for New Orleans. They've encountered the rain, which has hurt their big play offense. They've encountered the number one rushing team in the league. They've encountered
got it, the team that's the number one team against the rush in the league. And in this rainstorm, they've come up short. Birmingham has played extremely well. 2.25 to go. Walden down the sidelines, and no good down the sidelines. Ricky Ray breaks it up. Again, what a great play by Ricky Ray. You know, at the first half, beginning of the, of the second half, up here in the booth, we had Joe Canizero, who was the owner of the New Orleans Breakers, and he was pacing around. He was nervous, and all of a sudden, now we have Jerry Scalar here, and he's going crazy. He is the president of the... Birmingham State. This is a presidential box where we are, I guess. That's right. Marion Marion Brown just could not get the ball. I gotta get Jerry out of that green jacket and get him into a red one. Fourth down, they gotta go for it. Walden puts it up and it's intercepted again. He's got his third of the night. One of them for a touchdown. He's got six in the league. by Chuck Clanton. Tons of yardage by Joe Crib. It is the night of Birmingham. Gary Clanton, third time playing center field. He reads the play very well. What he's doing back there now, he's looking at Johnny Walton's eyes. Here comes the throw. Look at Clanton. Who's over? That was supposed to be for Charlie Smith, number 85, but was overthrown again. Here comes Clanton. All he wants to do is either somebody run me out of bounds or let me get out of bounds. The 28,100 who have come in here, most of them Birmingham Stadium fans are leaving happy as New Orleans, the only undefeated team in this division, apparently is about to go down and Birmingham is about to win its fifth in a row. 2.11 to go, time is called by Birmingham. Out, Raleigh Dodge on the sidelines. Big night for them. They're playing at home. First down. This is Birmingham carrying the football, and that is Leon Perry, who has scored two touchdowns tonight. They're down near the two-minute warning. Miller added a field goal to make it 24 to 17. And then came the disastrous. There was a pitch behind Marcus Debris recovered at the one. Perry took it in from the one, and Birmingham had the 31 to 17 lead, and that's where we are. Clanton has intercepted three passes. Joe Cripps has gained as much yard as the entire New Orleans offense combined. Well, it's not a day. No one took a timeout because of the two minutes and three seconds to go down because they ran the ball. Robert Woods, number 72, the left tackle, got injured on the play. Now they're playing on this on this series right here. They're playing with the three tight ends again. Daryl Mason, Robin Earl, and Battaglia, number 59, is playing one of the tight end positions, and he has to report every play. Well, if this holds up, we have to congratulate two coaches tonight: Roddy Dodge of Birmingham for winning the fifth in a row, knocking off undefeated New Orleans, and John Thompson of Georgetown, who has brought the Hoyas their first ever national championship. Roddy Dodge. He won't mind that. When he takes his Dick headset Curry, off, he will mind that. Yeah. When, when Raleigh takes his headset off, you'll know the game is over with. That is not Dick Curry, though. With the hoods and the rain, it's hard to tell. From the 41-yard line, it is second down and five to go. Big man, Curry gets the first down. And that's the two-minute warning. Big night for Birmingham. Here from Cliff Stout, 32 yards at all for a total of 181. Here's Cribs in the end zone all by himself. And Birmingham and Cribs had a great night. Joe Cribs, who went to school at nearby Auburn, signed from Buffalo, came here, has 181 yards total. The audience has 199. Cribs almost did it, but that is, by the way, Paul, is about 400 yards less for New Orleans than they got last week. They've gotten so far tonight. And Cribs is our Menon MVP. Our congratulations. First down, Birmingham. The ball at the 32-yard line of New Orleans. Look at that total. An incredible night. He's still in the game. He's not done yet. But this is the man who's had a 
a good night. Before that carry, Leon Perry had carried 13 times for 44 yards. Last week he carried 13 times also when he was supposed to be a blocker. I forgot to tell him he's no longer a blocker. <laughs> he's still running the ball very well. Hey, one of his blocks on a Joe Cripps run was awesome. I, I like there, that stick, Corey, there, and he's not a, a saying something. This is a, a good football team. The weather has been against them all evening. Mistakes in the game. Well, he goes home next week and gets expansion Pittsburgh. And then Tampa Bay, which has lost three in a row, and Paul and I will be there for that one. Two weeks from tonight. Perry trying to find a way. Carries the ball for the 15th time tonight. New Orleans is calling for timeout. 109 left. They're calling for timeout. A game marred by rain, marred by mistakes, turnovers, Led to two touchdowns directly for Birmingham. The interception by Clanton, who had three tonight, returned for a touchdown on Walton's first pass. And then, of course, Walton's with that slippery ball threw the ball behind the free on a pitch out. Birmingham recovered the ball at the one foot line, and Perry took it in. Her words were never spoken by Coach Curry when he said that uh, just. We've got to keep the ball away from this football team because they just grind it out. Raleigh Dodge must think it's over with because he doesn't do that. Doesn't take his headset off until he's completely sure. A jubilant bench. Bob Lane over there can afford to be happy too. Remember the fake field goal and Lane ran the ball for the first down. Everybody's gotten into the act tonight. was a good looking football team and make no mistake in their beloved dome down in New Orleans where it doesn't rain inside the breakers will be back and Pittsburgh gets them next week and the breakers will be angry you said something to me a couple of weeks ago when you came back from a Birmingham game and you said this is a great football team it's a good looking team Stout has not been intercepted since game number one there goes Cripps again down to the 16 yard line Mind you again that for all the offensive problems of Walden and company, they are number two against the rush, and Joe Walden has had a personal triumph tonight. What did you have on Cribs? Add 13 more to it. There's Adelette getting out, getting a block, and then watch the moves of Cribs. You think a wet field does not bother Joe? I don't know what kind of shoes he has on, but I think everybody should wear them. 194 yards for Cribs unofficially, five yards less than New Orleans. Now they what a the performance. Ball. What a performance. He also has taken over the lead in rushing for those 162 yards tonight. Big night Joe Krebs. Half a minute to go. That's it. They're unpiling. Birmingham applauding on the line of scrimmage. They have handed previously unbeaten New Orleans their first loss. They have won their fifth in a row in the Southern Division. Both teams, New Orleans and Birmingham, are now 5-1. and one. We've got eight seconds left on the clock. Cribs had a great night. Uh, Joe Cribs did it all. I, I like, there's a new leader in the rushing category, Joe Cribs, over 600 yards. Jim, I'd like the replay we showed to Cribs for the minute because he says he wants to get into pass receiving part of this game. We will check in on Birmingham next Saturday night in Jacksonville. But for tonight, with the score 31-17 Birmingham, I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. Good night from Legion Field, Birmingham.